Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Try Socks, and I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today we're going to talk about the ethics and moral responsibility when you give family and friends financial advice and how that can burn you using Paul from Everything Money's example about shorting NVIDIA stock in their family hedge fund account. Get to it. <laughs> Two stupid guys trade stocks. To okay, clarify, so... not a hedge fund, their family account. Sorry, right? Book. Oh, but now what sounds cooler now? Can so clarify what's happening? He shorted in the video. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, you know, the the whole story behind everything money is the two hosts there. Both of their their fathers are are pretty wealthy. They're I think they're both. Um, uh, oncologists, I want to say, if I'm if I'm correct. Uh, so they got a decent sized family inheritance. One of them, Paul, basically, they have a family office, if you will, where all the all their inheritance is is kind of in one lump sum, and they invest it in different buckets, whether whether it be real estate, businesses, or stocks. And you know, he's been openly kind of bearish in talking about Nvidia's, you know, valuations. It's something we've also talked about being yeah. extremely elevated. Okay, I would agree. Um, but. When you have that moral ethical responsibility where you're investing money for that's like family money, right? There's a very different kind of mindset about it. And he did something really risky where he was, you know, he was actually selling in the money calls, like making a bearish trade on Nvidia stock. He said they're two years out, so he's got a, a fair amount of time to be correct. Uh, but that is a pretty bold move to be making with family money, and it's caused a fair amount of strife. So we're going to look at some video clips of him talking about this publicly and, and kind of discuss, like, point by point, you know, what the thought is there. Got it. But you've got to play it. The joke on, uh, uh, will I close my shorts of NVIDIA, NVIDIA Beats? No. I'm going down with this fucking ship. I do not recommend that. All so right. it's a... It's a pretty bold move to say that when uh you're not the only one on the ship okay <laughs> goddamn, maybe the captain of the ship but you know there's people in the back like if the pilot i said that next time i'm on an airplane i'm getting off that plane okay <laughs> it's pretty funny uh, all right yeah all right it, was funny. it has caused some strife within our uh, family um yeah, so, you know, we're shooting this, like, two days before Christmas. Do you think he's getting invited? You know, is Christmas going to be a little cold holiday because of stuff like this? The, don't forget, like, the, the price of your relationships can really – it's hard to put that into, like, a valuation, right? Because, like, you know, it doesn't matter if you turn out to be right. You've damaged the relationship just by doing something like this. It, it, I, I get that, like, you know – it's not – you can't just always stay away from it, but you really have to take that into account when you're – you know, helping people along their journey to like financial success, right? This so, this trade yeah. seems like a personal account trade. It doesn't seem like a, you know the, you can still do this trade, just do it with your own brokerage. It's riskier, so it shouldn't be you know part of inheritance. Burning again, it is not. You know what the reason being? I don't care. It's not worth the. We've had honestly, guys, we've had arguments. My brother and I have had real arguments. The last three days, I've come to the studio. The last two days, I've come to the studio in a bad mood and late because the arguments my brother got get into. It's not worth it. And every single time I'm. Well, at least he's arriving at the fact that it is not worth it. Like that, that that's ultimately where it needs to be. I mean, the crazy part to me is that he's continuing with the trade. He's just, he's paying out his brother in order to not do it. Like this is, this is something like, if I were to do something like this, this would be like in my stupid fun money account where I don't care if it blows right. up. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't even exactly. do this in my own retirement account. Never mind like doing this in a family member's account. Like that's just wild to me, you know? Next. Like, you're out of this thing, I'm covering everything, etc. Just last night we came up with our final decision. I'm covering everything from yesterday's close going forward. That is all my life. If it goes lower, it's on me. I will write him a check. Just being honest. Yeah. So he's assumed all liability, which is the right thing to do, I think, morally uh, at this point. But, you know, he's significantly damaged the, the relationship already at this point. And it's going to be hard to, to build back that trust. It's going to take years, right? So I have a question after this for that clip. Be it one more. Okay. That's it. Um, ben, I, that's not true. I will short again in the future, but, I'm, but what my brother and I are doing is we're separate. Right now, we have one big family account. We're separating our accounts at the end of next year. Right. So I think that really highlights it too. Like not, not only that, that relationship is, is broken to the point of like they, they no longer can cooperatively work together to invest at, all over like one very, very aggressive trade. Like I, I get that his logic was there, but that, that's not something you can do without like fully discussing the risks of doing something like this. You know, and it sounds like, I don't know, his brother was definitely doesn't have the same risk appetite he does. And, you know, whether or not it was clearly discussed with him just how risky this is beforehand, 
Uh, I kind of doubt, but that's right. So two questions. One, two. I'm confused on the writing a check after the close because it is an option. So technically he has lost zero money. The value of the option is lower, but it was a two year expiration. So it could go higher. He sold a calls in the money call. So in, in, in reality, oh. he collected money up front. Okay, and sorry. now to buy those back would be it would cost more. So, yeah. you know, basically what he's just saying that like whatever losses exist, he's going to have to cover from his own personal kind of right. you know, wealth or income or, you know, kind of assets. Here's the here's the other thing. I just want to show NVIDIA's chart. OK, I fully agree. NVIDIA is vastly overpriced. All right. You can't short it. OK, um, here's the chart. Let me here's a wheat chart. This thing has gone up uh, absolutely insane from the middle of 2022 being at 114 to 405. So I completely agree or 405, almost 500. Sorry. Um, yeah. I completely agree. It seems overpriced. However, one things in the stock market don't have to make sense Two, if you like if, if you as Paul or me who think it's overpriced. Will NVIDIA get significantly more business in the next five years? The answer is yes. Everyone knows that. They definitely will. They're at the leader of an AI boom, creating chips that are mandatory to supply the demand. They're one of the yeah. only ones that have the, the chips that can actually do it with some other ones being from AMD. Yeah. So and it, you know they're going to get more business. I'm not saying I'm, I agree with their price at all. Yeah. It shouldn't be more Absolutely. than like 250 However, are they priced perfection? Yes. If you look at their quarterly reports, do they keep on hitting perfection? Yes. Yeah. All right. Second, their moat is ridiculous. It just, there's no one else that can really compete. AMD keeps trying over the years. This is not a company that you can short. Now, if, if he had done this with Tesla, also a terrifying stock to short, it is not illogical for me to say, Tesla is going to have more competition than they've ever had each year progressing forward. That is a fact, right? They're, they're going to lose money on top of the line because when you have more competition, you can't charge $55,000 for a $30,000 car. So they're going to run yeah. into some issues. That makes way more sense to me. Or if you had like Nikola at $90 and the guy's just lying constantly, it's not as risky, right? I think his brother yeah. would be behind that short. You can't short this company and if you do it's with fun money it is not with an inheritance account it is with a small sample size and that's it yeah yeah you need to be on on that plane by yourself before you decide whether or not you can crash it into the ground okay that that that's that's just crazy to me that he would take that much risk with a family account where there are other people and their risk tolerance are involved here that obviously do not share the same set of values that he does yeah once again I'm not justifying Nvidia's price. It's insanely high, uh -huh. but uh, you we will sell more chips. They will make it. Just is it just is what it is. Yeah. So I don't You're know. Standing in front of like a train. Yeah, pretty much. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Much All right, guys. We don't do let stupid know. stuff. Get money, okay. <laughs> right. Let us get, let us know what you guys think, and if you're going to start a family hedge fund. Yeah. There you go. Have a good one. <laughs>